Former Minister of Sports and Youth Development, Solomon Dalong, has criticized the Tinubu-led government for consistently attributing Nigeria's economic challenges to ex-president Muhammadu Buhari. In a series of posts on his ex-account on Monday, Dalong argued that if Tinubu's administration devoted the same resources and effort used during elections and tribunals to tackle security and economic issues, significant improvements could be achieved. Dalong expressed disdain for attempts to shift blame to Buhari and others within his government, stating that it was hypocritical. He questioned whether bulk trading was the only solution proposed by the economic team, highlighting the urgency of addressing hunger and the high cost of living. Meanwhile, Yotine Oyo State took to the streets to express their displeasure over the harsh economic conditions in the country, while urging the federal and state governments to put in place better economic policies and programs to address the high cost of living and tackle insecurity, corruption, and poverty. Our correspondent, Oluta Famous School, has more. The main gate to the entrance of the sectariat in Agudi area of Ibadan is unusually locked on a Monday morning in anticipation of the planned protest by residents of the city to express displeasure over the lingering economic hardship which has left bitter tales in the minds of many Nigerians. As early as 7 a.m., Several youths converged on Mokola roundabout, where the protest commenced, with several aggrieved Nigerians carrying various signposts along the streets to protest the high cost of living and economic hardship alongside unfavorable government policies, which they say have made their lives unbearable. Our country is hungry. We just need their intervention. We do not want to fight with them. We are not here to cause any problem. We are just here to tell the government our, our, our problems, that they should just look into this for us. That they should please look into the problem of the masses. Help us. Have mercy on us. People are hungry. People are dying daily of hunger. Insecurity is killing people. We just need them to help us. They should just help us. They should just look into our case and be of help to Nigerians. That's just all we need. We are not here to fight. We are not hoodlums. We are not here to cause any disrupt to anybody. We just want to peacefully protest and tell the government what we want. The protesters did not stop there. They took their message to other parts of Ibadan with a promise not to back down until hope is restored to the ordinary Nigerian. Expect protest from any angle. It must not be me. It can be you. It is everybody because the problem does only affect only me. Neither I. It affects everyone. So on this note, every Nigerian, whether and abroad, anywhere you find yourself, if you have the capacity, organize. We will be there for you. If anybody stops you, we will come for your rescue. It is a duty in which we are signing for, and we must collectively fight for our liberation. Enough of this hike in our cost of living. No, we cannot afford to eat three square meal a day. Why those that are governing us, they can eat and they are even riding on our own money. What they extort from us is what they used to live lavish. Security officers mounted strategic points to forestall a breakdown of law and order while urging calm among the youths. The police urged them to abide by the provisions of the constitution in expressing their grievances. Uh, we understand that uh, people have rights uh, for uh, this kind of thing, but it is our duty as law enforcement to ensure that it is not hijacked by unscrupulous and mischievous um, elements who might want to make uh, criminal proceeds from uh, this kind of situation. As you can see uh, from Mokola, which was the starting point of uh, uh, this movement, uh, the police has covered, I mean, by foot and, you know, even with vehicles, you know, uh, following them step by step. The youths promise not to back down until their demands are met. It is left to be seen how soon the government would attend to their requests. Holo Tai of Emosco, Arise News, Ibadan. Joining us now on the morning show is Com uh, Comrade Solomon Dalong, former Minister of Sports and Youth Development. Comrade Dalong, good morning. Thank you for joining us on the morning show. 
Good morning, Dr. Ruben Abati and the entire Rice family. Well, thank you for joining us quickly. If I recall correctly, you were a minister under the APC, Minister of Youth and Sports Development, 2015 to 2019. Then in uh, 2022, Correct. April 2022, you resigned from the APC and you joined the uh, SDP and ran for House of Reps uh, from Lanong North in the 2023 uh, general election. And now in 2024, uh, you have been quoted in the papers as being a very staunch critic of uh, President uh, Tinubu, who used to be in the same political family uh, with you. You say, well, he and his uh, Lagos uh, miracle, uh, you know, uh, you know, miracle workers have not been able to make any, any uh, difference. You accuse him for imposing hardship on Nigerians, and uh, you also accuse his spokespersons of uh, blatant hypocrisy. Uh, what are we dealing with here? Sour grapes? Is there something we need to know? Because the bitterness is so strong. Well, I, I, I think... Well, I, I, I thank you for the opportunity. Um, basically, what I have decided to be doing of recent is, is trying to place in the proper perspective uh, the attempt to try to change the narratives from the real issues affecting Nigerians to uh, mere propaganda and cyberbullying. Because the president's men, uh, instead of uh, being a source of strength to contributing ideas and knowledge as to how to deal with the escalating frustration of Nigerians about the high cost of living, they, they tend to invest more energies on um, uh, bullying anybody who has anything to offer or who lean his uh, voice to the increasing echo of concern by both <coughs> religious and traditional uh, rulers. I am um, the president's uh, greatest admirer uh, because he is also a comrade and there is uh, the spirit among the comrades to support each other. But one thing we don't do to ourselves is to be hypocritical. We tell ourselves the truth, uh, no matter how bitter it is. And I, all that I've been doing is to try to draw his attention that much is expected from him because Nigerians expected him, I mean, to uh, replay the Lagos miracles which transformed uh, Lagos State into a successful economy uh, today. But within the last seven months, it does appear that every day uh, things are slipping off uh, his uh, control, thereby uh, generating unnecessary national frustration. So I am not a critic, and I, I don't think we should now invent another new nomenclature from the, the wireless of our popular spokesperson, Femi Adesina to staunch critics now. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Dalong. But I'd, I'd like to ask you, because you mentioned something around the fact that as a fellow comrade, you're one of the president's admirers. However, you also owe him a duty as a comrade to speak truth and also state the fact as it is. Would you then say that part of the challenge that we currently have, particularly with this administration, is the fact that the president is surrounded by people who are unwilling to tell him the truth. So advisors who are not painting the true picture of the state of things to him, hence perhaps what could be responsible for certain decisions that are being made or a lack of response to some of what is see, seen to be a lack of response to some of the biggest challenges that we have. Because in your tweets, you mentioned some of his praise singers in your words, and you say that you're not one of those people. Would you say it's also um, what part of the challenge is the fact that he surrounded himself with people who are not telling him the truth? Um, President Tinibu's uh, presidency basically appears not to be distinguishable from the same group of uh, 
power and fortification by um, people within the veranda of uh, power. I, I say this because if you uh, gauge their statements and body uh, languages, they, they tend to overprotect the president and deploy maximum energy to go after anybody who may even be genuinely expressing a, a concern that needs to be addressed. I, I begin with the National Security Advisor, who has no business to begin to champion the campaign of uh, a blame game, because he introduced this. That signifies that he has something to hide from Nigerians, and is trying to overprotect. So there are people who have made the presidency inaccessible. I am trying to back up what I say with the facts, that when George Plato was boiling and they were killing people, as a leader, I rally round opinion leaders among the Fulani Hausa Christian leaders, and we discussed and decided that we should meet the National Security Advisor. They trusted me with the responsibility of moving them. This delegation included serving uh, members of the State House of Assembly. We drove to the office of the National Security Advisor. I called, uh, they, they, they stopped us at the gate and insisted that we must get clearance by calling him. I made several calls which he didn't pick. I sent several messages, he didn't respond. I sent several WhatsApp messages, he didn't respond. And at the end of the day, this delegation with all its noble ambition left back to just. And the next we had was the unfortunate calamity that befell the, the state during uh, celebrations. I have also personally tried to reach the chief of staff of the president to just get him and said, hey, man, we have to help you succeed because this country belongs to all of us. I will want us to discuss and I have alternative ideas to how we can deal with some of these challenges and how we can engage more Nigerians to give the government stability to perform. He, he did not even respond to any of my messages, despite the fact that I was even persuaded uh, reluctantly by one of our close friends. So the president is equally fortified by a group of uh, people who do not allow alternative op opinions to filter across. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Dalonga, good to see you again. And um, in that your uh, statement, this is Rufai, good to see you, sir. In that your statement, you no, may- No, Rufai, the, vo the, the voice is remarkable. Thank you, thank you, sir. In that your statement, sir, you talked about the fact that, yeah, a lot of things, you know, have been damaged by this administration, which a lot of Nigerians are facing now with the protests. But the part a lot of people too are saying against you, sir, is the fact that you two were part of the Buhari administration that damaged everything to start with. Take, for instance, you, in the sports ministry where you were, people celebrated your exits because you dampened the potential of sports. I remember the words you said when, you know, leading up to Russia 2018, the back and forth in the Athletics Federation, many things. So a lot of people are saying that in your time, you couldn't do it well. Why now these attacks on the likes of Buala and on Onuga that they are praising in Tinobu, that in your time you didn't do any better? That's number one. Secondly, what were the things you would like to say that Buhari did better? Because a lot of the slide in this administration also started from Buhari. We are not saying Tinubu doesn't share his blame. He has blames here. But to be objective, the crippling, the massive insecurity that you are talking about in the plateau, most of these things started from Buhari administration. So a lot of people are saying, you are not a saint too, Mr. Dalong, sir. God bless you, sir. Solomon Dalong had never claimed to be a saint. I have admitted severally. And even if it requires that I will be tied to the stake, 
and shot for my role in Buhari's government. I deserve it because we failed Nigerians. I've said this several times and I've apologized several times. So trying to make issues out of that is inconsequential for now. Okay. We failed because those promises that constitute the mandate of Buhari's government, which I was part of it, was not achieved after eight years. Despite the fact that it's one of the government in the history of Nigeria, that Nigerians invested, including common people, to bring the government into power. So I am not trying to play saint. But all I am saying is that despite that, Buhari did not even survive my toxic mouth. I did not spare Buhari, even in government or out of government. About my failure that has been referred to in sports, to the best of my knowledge, I did my modest best, and I still have a tall and unchallenged achievement in that ministry. It's left for uh, people to accept. Um, my brother and friend, uh, Daniel Buala, uh, who had uh, decided to maybe consider whatever my opinions were uh, as a hostile approach. I've apologized to him because he has referred to me as a, a multidimensional, um, to be multidimensionally incompetent. I am not laying claim to monopoly of knowledge. But all I am saying is that how could President Tinubu be surrounded by such um, uh, Cambridge intellectuals, yet uh, local women in MENA understood the dynamics of Nigerian politics more than them. I mean, these women, none of them was wearing anything more than 10,000, and they're not properly schooled. But they were able to mobilize people to protest, meaning the thesis of the protest was more superior to the intellectual prowess of the likes of Bwala and Unanuga, because the women were saying that the, an empty stomach it does not listen to a voice of gospel. And that is what I am saying, that the president should concentrate on tackling and not the blame game. Buhari tried in his modest way. What did he do differently? Buhari appreciated the dynamics of the Nigerian economy when he came in because he appointed a very modest cabinet of 36 ministers. Each minister was approved only two eights. Buhari did not change vehicle in the first four years of his tenure that I also served. Buhari cut his salary by 50%. Buhari, Buhari uh, also took measures that brought Nigeria out of recession within a year. Even though in the final analysis, he is a hero of wars to be once celebrated for not being able to run the race to the end. He should not be blamed for self-inflicted in, uh, injuries caused by President Tinibu's administration. Well, comrade, let me ask you. One of the things you said about the uh, Tinubu administration is that it is rudderless, rudderless since uh, May 29. You also criticize uh, the government for adopting IMF uh, policies, removing uh, forest subsidy without providing uh, buffer, uh, buffers, uh, and also you know, not knowing what to do about uh, the food. Uh, and yet, this is the same Tinubu administration that has told us through the CBL governor that the government has been commended by the IMF, the same IMF that you, you are against, commended by rating agencies, international uh, uh, rating uh, agencies. So how is the government ruderless? And the government says people should be ready to make sacrifice and be patient and endure. And you say nobody should uh, 
listen to any call for patience or sacrifice. Why do you say so? What options are available to the people? What other options? My uh, reputable uh, professor and brother, when a witch announced that a sick person has recovered, mourning should commence. That IMF, IMF had commended President Tinubu's government is the evidence that they have dealt a massive blow to our attempt for economic transformation. The prescription of the IMF had never <coughs> in the history of the world succeeded in transforming any country. The Southeast Malaysian countries that today are celebrated industrialized nation emerge without the IMF prescription. So why can't we develop our own homegrown economic policies that will recognize our uniqueness? The president, I refer to the government as ruderless because the president on the 29th of May armed Nigerians with a weapon to criticize him and should not spare him because he said, and I called, do not pity me. I look for the job and I got it. So those overprotecting him cannot be more Catholic than the Pope. He has given us the right not to spare him. And I thank him for conferring that right on me. On that same May 29th, he made some profound statements which guaranteed some uh, relative hope in Nigerians. But after a few days, he rolled out his palliative programs. And the palliative programs followed the same dimension of the Buhari style of sharing money and grants to state governors. And the moment you tell Nigerians that you have released grants to NEMA, a lot of people will look for their blood pressure medication <laughs> because of the bitter experiences they have had with NEMA. NEMA is good in accepting declaration of release of grants but very, very economical in accountability of how uh, it, it has been distributed. So when he rolled out the same method and gave money to governors to go and share, of course, it is the evidence that the ship had lost control and is living at the mercy of the storm. I don't need any uh, soothsayer to tell me this. So it became ruderless from analysis of some of the policies the government rolled out as a response to how it can deal with the consequences of the withdrawal of fuel subsidy. So a lot that has been done by this government to dealing and tackling with the problems contributed much in driving us to this uh, bus stop of frustration. Therefore, in the circumstance, I, I may not be too wrong to have used that word. It, it may also even suggest that I too is also frustrated. All right, I, I hear your frustrations and you expressed that yesterday um, using X. You also made reference to the statements made by the PDP, which is or could be considered the chief opposition party currently. And um, what they've asked is if the president seems not to have, if he doesn't have a grasp of how to steer the ship of Nigeria, then he should honorable resign. However, you're not in support of that because you're saying that if he does resign, then it's still an APC government. So you're putting the fault at it being a party issue. Is that what you're saying? And if that's the case, 
what then is the solution? Because if he wouldn't resign, you're saying that he's, he's well, wordless in terms of the policies that have been brought forward. So you have literally just or summarily tagged this administration as, being, as not being competent enough to handle the issues that, currently, um, that that's currently facing Nigerian. What is then your solution? Because beyond just you know, being, offering your opinions as to how bad the situation is, you would also want to offer some sort of um, way out as to what is the next step. In your opinion, what is that next step? The PDP, the, 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 the request of the PDP governors for the president to resign is irresponsible and reckless because it, it has, that is, it, it, it refers or it means politicization of the entire problems on our hands. Uh, even if Trimu resigned, you still, the next sheriff on the line is another APC man. The problem should not be personalized. The problem should be taken holistically. The APC has not given Nigerians a credible covenant of mandate. In 2015, we campaigned uh, with change, the change mantra. Immediately we came into office, Lai Mohammed, in trying to respond to our inability to quickly fix the problems of the country as expected by Nigerians, he came up with change begin with you. And then in 2019, we have not successfully accounted for the change and we scale it up to next level. And from next level, which left the country worse than even before the change mantra, we are today talking about renewed hope. So there is no categorical uh, uh, political covenant that the APC as a political party is committed to and is pursuing. And this explains why I am very uncomfortable for the advocacy of resignation because that is calling for anarchy. I wouldn't want President Tinubu to resign, but I am going to insist that the president do the needful. What are the, I mean, solutions I can put on the table? The immediate solutions the president needs to look at is to crash fuel prices by either reducing it uh, with 50% subsidy intervention, transparent subsidy intervention. It should also crash the rising cost of food in the country, even if it requires importation. In the interim, it has to do that. Because there must be Nigerians first before there will be Nigeria. And in doing this, in fact, in, in, in even handling this very issue of the release of grants ongoing, he should change his methodology. Appoint a national grants sharing committee comprising of reputable people, politicians, civil society, traditional rulers, uh, religious leaders, women, and youth from each local government should be there should be a person who chairs the local government committee these reputable nigerians should be entrusted with these grants to distribute to nigerians the mere fact that you have changed the method and those handling the distribution is going to restore okay. some hope and confidence okay. Okay. in Nigeria. Mr. Nigerians. Mr. Lalong, as we wrap up, uh, two things. You said Dalong, Dalong, man. Mr. Dalong, sorry. Please forgive me. 
Mr. Dalong, as we wrap up, two things. You said you tried reaching out to some top people in government. I would like to ask, would you like to see President Tinubu? I mean, just to have a one-on-one, -on -one, even deeper conversation with him as we speak. That's the first question. Number two, yes, you put some solutions for that, but we're already paying subsidy. We've reversed the subsidy regime on petrol. So if you say we have price by 50%, which money are we going to use to do that? Secondly, you talked about the grains sharing formula, but we can't share that because there's no grains in the first place. We have sold the silos, or we have given the silos already to private sector to manage. So there's no, nothing there, it's audio. So how do we solve this problem? And how does a rudderless leadership, as you said in your words, now provide solution? Because as we speak now, we are stuck. How does this rudderless leadership, like in your words, not mine, now provide leadership at this point in time? But it goes back to my first question. Would you like to meet President Tinubu as we speak? Since 1999, there has been no any president of Nigeria that I have not been very close with and I have not advised. President Obasanjo, while in office, gave standing instruction to his aides that any time I call, even if he was sleeping, they should wake him up. I was just a bloody lecturer in the university. I was very close with President Yaradua, and I was also uh, his advisor. I mean, I have advised him privately. I was the, the, the worst critic of President Jonathan's government. But I met, he invited me severally, and I gave him solutions to some of the problems that I think he can deal with. I was part of Buhari's government, so I, I also did my best to make sure that I brought the firebrand and toxicness of my opinion to be on the president for things to be done right. I have only requested to meet with, I mean, Bajabia Mila, who we could share ideas and he may transmit it to the president. But if President Bola Ahmed Chinibu invited me as a citizen, I will respect him as a father, I will honor him as my leader and listen to him. If he seek my opinion on issues, I will honestly do it. Back to what you have said, it's more alarming that we don't have even grains to distribute. So what are we now promising Nigerians to distribute? Yet, if we don't have any, the government have money to mop up grains. The government have little money in their decision to mop up grains to give to the National Grain Distribu uh, Distribution uh, Committee. As to where do we get the money for the subsidy, there is no thing we can do for now to bring down the situation under relative control. Even if it requires borrowing to crash down prices, the president has to save this country from this uh, rising frustration of Nigerians. Because for me, I'm not expecting any miracle from him. But if he can keep Nigeria and also put food on the table of Nigerians and make life uh, more meaningful and be able to reduce these security challenges, I think he would have done remarkably enough to earn my respect. Well, uh, Conrad Dalon, thank you very much. Uh, well, maybe your good friend, uh, Daniel Bwala, maybe he will have some ideas about how to assess uh, the chief of staff and the national security advisor, since he seems to have found uh, a way of uh, assessing, uh, you know, both the president and uh, government officials now. Maybe you will have some ideas if we compare notes with him. But thank you very much for joining us on the morning show.